Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. What I'd like to do is show you how to graph f of x equals 1 half secant of x. And to go ahead and do that, what we first need to do is graph the reciprocal function of secant, which would be cosine. So technically, what I really want to graph is f of x equals 1 half cosine of x. Now, we notice that this graph is exactly the same as the parent function. The only really difference is this 1 half. And what exactly is that 1 half doing? Well, remember, when we look at uh, the kind of the transformation function, f of x equals a times cosine of bx minus c plus d. These are all the, the a, b, c, and d are all variable, are all placements that can affect the graph, the shape and the size and, the, um, and how it's, you know, the orientation of it. A, the only thing a really does for a cosine is affect its amplitude. So absolute value of a is what we call the amplitude. And that's going to be how high the graph is going to go up or down, or what we'd really call the half distance from the maximum to the minimum. So when we, know, when we look at the general function of f of x, the parent graph, f of x equals cosine of x, this has an amplitude of 1. That means the graph goes up 1, and it has a maximum of 1 and a minimum of 1. So now you can look at this graph and say, oh, well, this graph is only going to have a maximum of 1 half and a minimum of 1 half. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph the parent function, or at least the initial period. And it's going to be the exact same, the scale, the period, uh, the, you know, the phase shift is 0, vertical and transformation is 0. So we know that since it's the parent graph, I'm just going to base my graph off of the parent graph. Rather than going up to 1, though, I'm only now going to go up to 1 half. And I know that x scale is every uh, pi halves, so pi halves, pi, 3 pi halves, 2 pi. And I'll go in the negative direction as well. So this is the x scale, which you can determine by looking at the parent graph, which if you're getting into graphing, you ha I highly, highly recommend that you know what the parent graph looks like, what is the, what is the period, the x scale of the parent graph for all of your trigonometric functions. If you remember cosine, it always starts at the maximum um, of its initial period. But rather than starting up at 1 and going down to negative 1, we're only going to go up to 1 half, intercept, minimum, intercept, maximum. And then we can follow that down process here. Now, again, we are not really trying to graph cosine. So I'm going to use dashed lines to represent the graph. We are trying to graph um, secant. Well, secant um, is the reciprocal of cosine. So we can use the graph to help us determine where, first of all, where the asymptotes are going to be. And the asymptotes are going to be, is, um, for secant, is where the cosine graph um, is equal to 0. So you can see at each one of these cases, You can see at each one of these cases, uh, my uh, x value is, uh, or the y value is equal to 0 for cosine. So at that point, so therefore in the secant, it's going to be undefined. And then to round off my graph, I'm just going to make parabolas going in the opposite directions. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph um, the function for f of x equals 1 half secant of x. Thanks.